The fight of our government against illegal drug transactions has definitely gone a long way since the year it first started. We are very fortunate because our government recognizes the importance of a drug-free society to bring not only safety, but progress to its citizenry as well. To bring the fight against illegal drugs in motion, our government established the Dangerous Drugs Board and delegated it as the forefront in curbing illegal drug transactions in the country. And true to its objectives, the agency has developed and executed various successful programs against illegal drugs production, trade, and consumption over the years. Dangerous Drugs Board was created to eradicate the supply of and demand for dangerous drugs and precursor chemicals. It is also the main concern of the agency to promote regional and international cooperation, thereby to contribute to the global efforts against drug transactions. The DDB is managed by a board, a multidisciplinary body composed of 17 members. Among the 17 members, 3 are permanent, 12 are ex-official, and 2 are regular members. To determine the agency secretary, our president decides from among the three permanent members. DDB is moreover composed of a secretariat, headed by the executive director and assisted by the deputy executive directors for administration and operations. According to the National Household Survey, there are about 6.7 million drug users in the country. And among the various illegal drugs, methamphetamine hydrochloride remains to be the number one drug of abuse. No wonder this drug became a multi-billion peso transnational criminal activity and became a source of several conflicts between the government and the syndicates involved. Our country is not alone in this quandary, though as other countries share similar experience. But the onset of globalization and the fast development of communication and internet technology paved way to more sophisticated illegal drugs operations, therefore making the problem against international and national drug transactions a bigger issue to solve. For the purpose of dealing with the totality of the drug problem, the DDB adopts five pillars of action, namely drug supply reduction, drug demand reduction, civic awareness and response, alternative development, and regional and international cooperation. The concept of drug supply reduction is principally a law enforcement responsibility. This is the chief task of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PDEA, and other agencies like the Philippine National Police, Anti-Illegal Drug Special Operations Task Force, National Bureau of Investigation, Reaction, Arrest and Interdiction Division, and the Bureau of Customs Task Group Forces on Dangerous Drugs and Controlled Chemicals to direct the drugs away from the public by preventing diversion and trafficking. Other operations include by-bust actions, neutralization of international and local drug groups, arrest of drug personalities, seizure of illegal drugs, eradication of marijuana, and dismantling of clandestine laboratories among others. The DDB continually thinks of ways to take away drugs from the people. Through its legislative powers, it has issued board regulations for the effective monitoring of highly controlled drugs. It has allowed the issuance of S licenses for the handling of dangerous drugs, P licenses for the controlled precursors and essential chemicals, and special import permits and export declarations for those engaged, among others, in the manufacture of products with CPEC components. On the other hand, the drug demand reduction revolves around the concept of veering the public away from drugs by generating awareness and consciousness on the perils of drug abuse. This is an integrated function of the Dangerous Drugs Board, Department of Health, Department of Social Welfare and Development, National Youth Commission, Department of Interior and Local Government, Department of Education, and other allied government and non-government agencies.
education about the ill effects of drugs use in workplace, schools, and barangays is the central responsibility of the Preventive Education, Training, and Information Division of DDB. To achieve this, the division has conducted various presentations, focus group discussions, and talks to reach more clienteles including the students, families, and private organizations. There are also several Train the Trainer programs to harness the skill and understanding of future trainers who will serve as source persons in their respective localities. The skill and understanding of the trainers are important to develop because instead of them just providing drug information, as has been the case in the past, they can also develop people's skills on how to better cope with problems and therefore resist the pressure of drug abuse. The DDB periodically meets with the judges, prosecutors, law enforcers, and pharmacists to update them about the drug law and the related board regulations. The seminar workshops are also made a venue to coordinate and integrate the overall efforts of the criminal justice system in the investigation and prosecution of drug cases. Not only in schools and barangays, there is also nationwide activity that enjoins the young leaders from different parts of the country to be aware of and consequently participate in solving several issues and concerns of the youth in relation to illegal drug abuse. In answer to the call of our president to counter the disastrous effects of drugs among the youth, the DDB also launched the Barcada Contra Droga. The program is designed as a preventive education and information strategy which aims to empower a person to be a catalyst within his peer groups in inspiring and leading a healthy lifestyle through involvement in various wholesome activities. Barcada Contra Droga was launched in different colleges, universities, and even in workplaces nationwide. Students and faculties are encouraged to become members and actively participate in various drugs prevention activities. This is a live band concert tour at the different shopping malls featuring local bands and drug-free youth organizations. This project aims to give the participants the feeling of being high without resorting to the use of dangerous drugs. Treatment and rehabilitation play a vital role in limiting drug abuse. Hence, numerous medical, psychological, social case evaluations, and laboratory examinations are conducted to the suspected drug users and applicants for employment in government and private agencies through its central screening and referral unit. There are also outpatient treatment and rehabilitation services to those who are found to be experimenters and occasional drug users. To check on the effectiveness and relevance of various programs the Dangerous Drugs Board is implementing, its Research and Statistics Division conducts policy studies, program monitoring and evaluation, and other researches on drug abuse prevention and control. The concept is to promote public awareness on the evils of dangerous drugs and to elicit social response by advocating their non-use. These are being undertaken through public communication strategies involving interpersonal, traditional, and mass media. Community outreach is done in collaboration with other government agencies, anti-drug abuse councils, and non-government organizations. The advocacy is coursed through the conduct of Kids Against Drugs, poster-making contest, music against drugs, and participation in the Serbisho Muna Caravan. The observance of special events is packed with programs and activities designed to inform and draw more supporters in the overall anti-drug campaign. The International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking of Drugs, or IDADAIT, is an event held simultaneously in all the member countries of the United Nations every June 26. The Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week, on the other hand, is observed all over the country every third week of November in aid of information dissemination. 
The DDB also distributes brochures and posters, issues the quarterly DDB bulletin and yearly accomplishment report, and maintains a library that serves students and community leaders. The aim of the Alternative Development Pillar is to reduce the production of marijuana and eventually eliminate its cultivation through rural improvements and livelihood programs. The DDB explores sustainable projects to introduce to marijuana farmers, including that of sericulture, or the raising of silkworms for the production of silk in Benguet, where marijuana plants were discovered and uprooted. The Dangerous Drugs Board as the policy-making and strategy-formulating body on all matters pertaining to drug abuse prevention and control in the country, has maintained strong linkages with other countries such as USA, Australia, Japan, China, Korea, and member countries of ASEAN. Strong relations were also formed with regional and international organizations such as the Association of the ASEAN Senior Officials on Drug Matters, Heads of National Law Enforcement Agency, World Health Organization, and International Criminal Police Organization, among others. The alliance formed with these countries and organizations further improved the overall collaborative effort in the fight against the drug abuse problem and international drug trafficking. A closer and more dedicated working relationship among the countries and organizations involved is developed through continuous exchange of information and systematized networking of various drug demand and supply reduction programs. Dangerous Drugs Board, through its various programs and activities, is undoubtedly solid to its commitment in fighting illegal drug transactions in the country. But the battle against illegal drugs should not concern DDB alone. The fight should involve all, including government agencies, the private institution, religious groups, and the civilians. And with joint efforts, strong and united, a drug-free Philippines is definitely not far from realization.